We start with breaking news here in the UK, where the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, says he believes the Home Secretary did not breach the ministerial code. Suella Braverman, one of Mr Sunak's senior ministers, was accused of asking civil servants to help her avoid taking part in a group speed awareness course after she was caught speeding. Mr Sunak says he has consulted with the independent advisor on ministerial interests and was advised that on this occasion further investigation is not necessary. Well, let's cross live now to our chief political correspondent, Nick Erdley, who joins us from Westminster. Nick, this is broken in the last half an hour or so. What more has the Prime Minister, and for her part, Suella Braverman, had to say? In some ways, it's what the Home Secretary has been saying that's the most interesting from this exchange of letters, because she basically admits that she tried to avoid doing a speeding course where she would have been identified. She writes in a letter to the Prime Minister that she regrets her actions. If faced with a similar situation again, she would have chosen a different course of action. She sought, the Home Secretary admits, to explore whether bespoke arrangements were possible given her personal circumstances as a security protected minister in the UK government. In essence, she's saying, I asked if I could get a one-to-one -one course or a private course after a speeding conviction because I didn't want to be outed as someone who was on a more public course. Now, the decision the Prime Minister had to make after getting that account from the Home Secretary was whether she'd broken the rule book that ministers have to follow or whether there should be an official, an official investigation into whether she broke those rules. And on both accounts, he's decided no, he doesn't think she broke the rules. He doesn't think that the independent ethics advisor has to look into that either. So the top line is that Suella Braverman keeps her job. She's not facing any further probe into her actions. But as I say, she has admitted that she sought to get those bespoke arrangements, that she spoke to her special advisors about doing so. And she's apologized saying that if it happened again, she'd take a different course of action. Now, in October 2022, Swella Braverman resigned from her post as a minister after sending emails from her personal email. Then six days later, Rishi Sunak brings her back and she resumes the role of Home Secretary. Now, she's, she's not facing any further investigation from, from this incident, but this isn't now an isolated mishap, breach of the rules, however you want to see it or describe it. Will it be politically and personally damaging to her, do you think? Yes. I think inevitably will. There'll be criticism of her for not having the political sense to avoid getting into this situation in the first place. And as you say, because she was sacked by Liz Truss when she was Prime Minister for breaking the ministerial code, Suella Braverman already had that baggage of someone who had not always followed the rules the ministers have to abide by in the UK. The argument that Rishi Sunak's always made is that she apologised for that at the time and it was right to move on. His argument today is she's apologised for what she got wrong and it's right to move on from that as well. But there is just a wider thing, Gareth, here about the internal politics of why Rishi Sunak might have been quite reluctant to get rid of Suella Braverman. She's a popular figure on the right of the Conservative Party. She could be more of a thorn in Mr Sunak's side outside government than she is inside. So I suspect over the next couple of hours we've got Prime Minister's questions in just under an hour in Parliament in the UK. I suspect you'll hear some criticism that Rishi Sunak was too weak to sack her or too weak to order a further probe and some criticism that actually this is a political consideration from the Prime Minister as much as anything else. Yes, there is no doubt that the Keir Starmer, the Labour leader, will surely make some, some mileage out of this and, and reference that ministerial code. And for people, Nick, who maybe aren't up to terms and up to speed with these kind of issues, why is the ministerial code considered so important? And when there are potential or perceived breaches of it, why is so much made of that? The short answer is it's in the handbook that ministers are given and told that they have to follow in their job. It's the rules that they have to abide by. It's pretty detailed at certain points. Some of it is vague in the sense that it is open to um, interpretation. And I think that's what will have happened here because the big question was, did Suella Braverman let her private interests, being caught speeding in her car, interfere with her public interest? 
being a minister? Did she break the rules by asking some of her staff that she had in a ministerial capacity to do something to help her get a private one-to-one -one session when it came to a speeding ticket. Now, ultimately, the Prime Minister has decided that he doesn't think she broke that code. And this is an interesting part of the system. It's Rishi Sunak's choice. He is the judge when it comes to this. He can ask his ethics advisor to go and look into it and to give him recommendations and to come to a conclusion. But the ultimate responsibility for the ministerial code lies with the Prime Minister. He's the one that decides if probes are launched. He's the one who decides if there's any punishment. And there has been some criticism of that, that it should be a more independent process where an independent figure can look into something and say, actually, yeah, I fancy launching a probe into that because it doesn't look right to me. In this case, Rishi Sunak says he did mm. speak to this, his ethics advisor, and decide that a probe wasn't needed. But ultimately, the, the, the man who decides on the verdict is Rishi Sunak. All right, we're going to talk about the Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, because in the last hour or so, um, it's been confirmed that Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister, um, has decided not to order an investigation into his Home Secretary after uh, she was revealed and reported to have asked civil servants whether she could avoid paying a speeding fine by taking a personal speed awareness course instead. There's been an exchange of letters, uh, one from Suella Braverman to the Prime Minister, explaining um, her reasons, and uh, Rishi Sunak has responded, saying he has uh, asked his independent advisor to look at it and Sir Laurie Magnus um, has decided on this occasion uh, further investigation is not necessary and the Prime Minister says well I have accepted that advice and he said he didn't believe the matter amounted to a breach of the ministerial code. Suella Braverman had uh, beforehand uh, written a very long detailed uh, letter um, in which she explained in full um, her reasons uh, for the course of action that she decided to take but you can see there highlighted that in the end, she said she would have chosen a different uh, course of action uh, with hindsight. Um, let's talk to the BBC's political editor, Chris Mason. Chris, hello to you. I mean, on the face of it, I suppose you could say straightforward decision by the Prime Minister based on advice uh, from his ethics advisor. But on closer inspection, was it a finely balanced judgment to do with the internal uh, state of the Conservative Party? Nothing says Westminster Joe like an exchange of letters, uh, particularly an exchange of letters on Wednesday morning immediately prior to Prime Minister's questions where the Prime Minister would have needed an answer on what he was doing as far as Suella Braverman was concerned and he now has that answer. That doesn't mean it won't be scrutinised of course by the opposition parties but he has come to a decision. He'll hope that the arc of this story if you like has turned a full circle. So from the Prime Minister's perspective his argument is look that he is a, a scrupulous follower of due process. So so hence his uh, involvement of Sir Laurie Magnus, the independent advisor on ministers' interests, and Sir Laurie's judgment, as articulated in the letter from the Prime Minister, that there wasn't enough to see here to warrant a full investigation uh, by the uh, independent advisor. So the Prime Minister can say in that sense he has followed the process to its logical conclusion and the Home Secretary as you were articulating can say in her letter mm, maybe I should have chosen a different course of action just swallowed the points of the fine and not cause all of this brouhaha. The crux of what she's saying in her letter out loud we've had this from, from her team over the last couple of days but to see it explicitly written down in her own words is that she didn't fancy the potential embarrassment of doing an online speed awareness course where one of her fellow speedsters decided to leak to a reporter that the Home Secretary was on the course. I'm not sure, to be quite honest, even if that had happened, it would have generated all that much news, to be honest, but she was clearly nervous about that, hence the request that she made uh, of civil servants and special advisors to see if there was an alternative route through it. To answer your question directly, Joe, sorry, I'm being rather long-winded here, uh, there are some, yeah, on, on the Conservative backbenches, particularly on the right of the party, who see Suella Bradman as something of a, uh, you know, a flag wave, if you like, for their outlook of conservatism within the government and see it as very important that she remains there, and an irritation from some at what they see as some within the machinery of government uh, out to get her, bluntly, and so will be relieved that that has not been the outcome of what's happened here. Let's start with Suella Braverman. Was that the right decision, Andrew, by the Prime Minister not to call an investigation or not well, to go it, ahead? It, it, well, the Prime Minister wasn't making a decision. What he was doing was acceding to the independent ethics advisor that he was under massive pressure to set up 
and abide by the decisions of, and indeed in the case of Dominic Raab, only recently, he did abide by that as well. I mean, it certainly seems to me, if you can't insist that he has an independent investigator and that he abides by the decisions of the independent investigator and then criticise him for not doing that. And you, know, you, you can't have it both ways. He's got this independent person. They've said the ministerial code wasn't broken. He's accepted that. Right. Well, there's all... nothing to see about that. Nothing we to see here. Our... No, no. Don't, don't, don't misquote me there, Joe. No. I'm saying well, that is what you no, said. Because that is a different headline. Nothing to see here. I'm not saying that Suella Braverman has no cause to answer. But ah. to your point about what the prime minister has decided to do, all he has decided to sure. do is to do, you think do she... as the. Well, do you think she has got a case to answer? Him. I, I, on that point, yeah. I myself, and, and I'm, I'm not happy about it, I attended a oh. speed awareness course some years ago now, and, and actually, during that speed awareness course, really struggled to concentrate because I spent my time thinking, is anyone looking at me and, you know, thinking that's, you know, at the time I was a junior minister. And actually, I think some of the points that have been made about the need for everybody in a speed awareness course to focus on what is actually a really important bit of learning mm -hmm. for drivers is actually a very valid one. So, right, OK. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't think she has a case to answer because the All independent right. ethics advisor says the ministerial code wasn't broken. Well, to slightly conflate then, there's okay. nothing to see here, Angela. Well, she already been sacked once for breaking the ministerial code. She was brought back after six days in what I think was obviously a deal to avoid there being a... Uh, a, a, a vote to put the Prime Minister in Downing Street. He's too weak to get rid of her. I mean, I would rather see her sacked for being completely incompetent and useless <laughs> at her job. Uh, but there is here a kind of pattern of ministers thinking that the laws don't apply to them. The laws they set, the laws that they're responsible for, somehow they ought to get out of. Well, obviously that's not of. the case because the independent well, on, ethics advisor says... Let's, let's, yeah, well, I'm coming to that. Let, let Angela finish her point. This is the third independent ethics advisor. Mm. The two previous ones had to resign because the then Prime Minister... But do you not accept what Laurie Magnus has said? They there, is just isn't, say, there isn't enough to investigate as, here. As I say, I think that the idea that you can have special treatment is not one of the principles that I'd like to see um, government ministers availing themselves of. So far we've had Gavin Williams and Dominic Raab and Naheem Zahawi have to resign from this cabinet because well, they have all gone. of the way that... Well, finally, I mean, they had to be dragged well, kicking and screaming. Well, I mean, but what's, the, what, what's at the heart of this issue? I mean, is it about Rishi Sunak not having the strength to make his own decisions uh, about what he feels about Suella Braverman? Or is it in the way that Angela said, should he, should he be judging her more on her job, her job as Home Secretary, rather than the way she's handled this speeding it's offence? It's just fundamentally not serious. Yes. You know, I, I really think a lot of people will be watching this thinking well, there's a war in Europe, we have massive economic problems, we have a rising China, we don't know where we're going, it's the whole West. And here we are talking about speeding tickets and these tiny process stories. It's like we're addicted to the most trivial aspects, both as political, but also, I've got to say, as a media culture. Why can't we focus on the important things? If you don't like what Sir Suella Braverman is saying, then get her on the big principles. You might have principled objections to her view on migration. Fine, talk about that. But little details about speeding tickets, most people People, I think, will throw their hands up in the air and say, who cares? Well, do you agree with Freddie? Are you throwing your hands up in the air? Um, uh, that sounds far too uh, a camp a gesture. Um, I, I think we all just about fell off our chairs with astonishment, didn't we, when we discovered that you, this wasn't going to go anywhere further. Um, to, address, uh, uh, to address the point about whether or not ministers should behave differently from the rest of us, I think ministers should live in the real world. I think if she gets caught speeding, and incidentally, it's important to remember, that her officials initially denied that she'd been speeding, her political officials denied that she'd been speeding, so they didn't tell the truth initially. Of course she should go off with a hoi polloi and sit in a room with all the other people who committed exactly the same offence, and she should be trained. That's how ministers but get she, detached she did, from reality. She did pay the fine and she took the point. Yeah, but she wriggled, didn't she? If she'd initially well, just thrown up her hands and said, I've done this, I'm not this... the only person in the country to speed, I'm Honestly, very sorry I've John. done it, the story would have gone away. It would have gone away. <laughs> It's all she the wriggling. Well, what, is that a technical term? She wriggled. So have you have you never had a decision where if, if as I say, I've done a speed awareness course, you get an offer, you take three points and a fine or you do a speed awareness course. I was actually quite interested to do the speed awareness course and I was conscious that that actually could end up in some embarrassment. If you're the Home Secretary, you can understand 
her wriggling, as you put it, mm -hmm. simply taking the decision, is it possible to do this without being in a spotlight? I can understand why she's it? embarrassed. If I were no, her, I'd be embarrassed a lot of the, a lot of the time. Decision, but, but she but should have sat there with everybody else and done the course. And you want her sacked for it. It's, that, well, I agree with Freddie. It's just, I mean, it's, I'd, I'd rather see her sacked for being here. useless at I, her And job. I agree with well, that. She should I mean, be sacked for other she's, stuff. She's useless right, at her job. So why does he think his Home Secretary seems to have such a problem coping with points-based systems. 